Australia is one of the most biodiverse countries on Earth, and for tens of thousands of years, its land has been skillfully managed by its first peoples. Traditional small-scale burning was an integral part of maintaining the ecosystem. Since colonisation, many Indigenous people have been forced off their land. In their absence, large wildfires have moved in, aggravated by climate change and rising temperatures. I'm in Western Australia, where the traditional owners are returning to their ancestral lands, rekindling ancient practices to protect one of the largest and most intact arid ecosystems in the world. For tens of thousands of years, a vast area of the Western Desert was home to the Madu people. Some of them were contacted by Europeans as late as the 1960s, when they were cleared off their land. Since then, enormous wildfires have devastated the landscape, with around 18 animal species disappearing from the area. On my way to the desert, I'm stopping off to meet Gareth Cap, an expert on how fire has affected Matu country. Have there been any particularly bad fires in recent years on Matu country? The biggest fires have been somewhere in the order of two and a half million hectares. This is a composite image taken over 10 nights and it shows some of the fires in the Western Desert. This fire is emitting more light than Sydney. Yeah, these, these are mega fires, these are extreme events. We're seeing these huge events where there's a lot of rain over summer, lots of grass growth, and then you end up with a landscape that's entirely flammable and ignite with the first lightning strikes of the, the oncoming storms in the next summertime. Left unchecked, this sort of thing will only get worse. So how important is it to have Māru on country? Oh, it's vital for this landscape. The interaction of people with the desert has entirely shaped the ecosystem there. The solution to these destructive wildfires is, surprisingly, fire. Madhu traditional burning, practised for millennia, is now being brought back to the land. In 2002, the Madhu won native title over their land. Good morning. And they have since started a ranger program, a key part of which is continuing this ancient practice. Good morning. Good morning. Dry season has just begun, so I'm joining one group as they go deep into Madhu country for two days to start their fire program before wildfires can take hold. Ready, Ready to go. <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> Going. I'm Indigenous too, from Walpree country. I spent part of my childhood in a remote community northeast of here. So I'm looking forward to getting back out to the desert. Carol Williams has been a ranger here for the last five years. What made you want to be a ranger? Well, to learn more Madu culture. Did you know about these things before you became a ranger? Uh, not really, but I learned from the water. Waka is one of the relatively few Aboriginal elders left who remembers using fire to hunt during his bushman days. His intricate knowledge of the landscape means he can show the younger rangers how and where to burn to keep the land healthy. <laughs> Okay, cool. So I got a bit of flame. So you okay. just like tap it, then walk and tap it again. And watch out. Oh, watch out. Oh, sorry. Oh, watch out. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this traditional method forms thousands of small clear patches that can prevent large wildfires from taking hold. How does lighting fire stop fire? If we make a fire like this, we're making a fire break. So lightning strikes and it might start a big bushfire. So by the time that bushfire gets here, it just stops. Yeah. And it doesn't spread so far. Yeah. With no Madu, there's no fire breaks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. The rangers only burn when it's cool, and as the vegetation is still green from the rains, this small fire will soon go out. Okay, 
मेरे क्या लम्बा बहुत कल वो एक माजा लगा लो ना लल नाइक it crawled off because of the fire yeah their eyes are so in tune with what to look for on this land blande yeah i am not god i am not happy can't do anything no people once areas have been burnt, they provide a diverse mix of habitats that can serve the native flora and fauna. The regrowth in this small burnt patch provides perfect foraging grounds, and the rangers now map and monitor the animals here. This is the bilby. It's got a bushy tail, big ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Australia has the worst rates of mammal extinction in the world. Like other animals, the bilby, a small nocturnal marsupial, has been in decline since the mardu left the land. The rangers now map and monitor population numbers using GPS trackers and camera traps. There, see, behind, there's a bilby hole there. Really? See the tracks there from last night? I might put the camera there so we can keep on um, counting how many bilbies we find. What's over here? This is a bush tomato. What was the name again in Maru? Wamula. That's good. Great. Now we've got a bit of bush tucker, it's time to set up camp for the night. Oh, never. <laughs> We're going to cook up some kangaroo tails. Yeah. Do it like this, eh? I used to just sit back and watch my aunties do it. <laughs> but we can eat them because there's so many of them all over our country. Did the Māori ever eat bilby? Tomorrow, we're going to head out to monitor another of the endangered species here, the black-flanked rock wallaby. The rangers don't always work alone in their conservation of the wildlife here on Mardu country. One of their partners is Alicia Whittington from Parks and Wildlife who's been working with the rangers for the past five years. Hey, Alicia. Hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. You too. I'm Rachel. Today we're going to put some rock wallaby traps up in these hills. Sounds good. Yeah. At risk of extinction, in the past few years, black-flanked rock wallabies have been found in several new locations on Mardu country. Alicia, who told you that they were rock wallabies here? I was lucky enough to Walker to come out and say this exact spot. So Walker told you they were yeah. here. Being able to work with people like Walker, who, who know the country so well, really helps us out. These traps will enable the rangers to monitor the health and genetic diversity of this wallaby population. Alwyn's just found some scats. So that's wallaby poo? Yeah. And that's a good sign? Yeah, good sign, yeah. For rock wallabies, large-scale wildfires burning over these ranges really takes its toll on the animals. So a, a really good fire program is really important. And um, the country's so much healthier because Matu are managing the land. Jared manages to recover a camera trap, which could show whether a healthy population of rock wallabies is persisting here, thanks in part to the continuation of traditional mardu burning in the area. And then boom, too. Wow. That's incredible. Look at that <laughs> one, it's right up close. <laughs> <laughs> Since Mardu have returned to the desert, in areas where they're burning, the overall size and intensity of wildfires have reduced dramatically. But the Mardu aren't alone. There are over 100 indigenous ranger groups across Australia, helping to restore over 67 million hectares of land. When you're out here and you see people like Waka lighting fires, you see the rangers caring for the endangered species, you understand that 
Without them, this country is not going to survive. It's made me think about my own country. It's something that's hard to articulate, you know, that connection that Aboriginal people have to their home country. And it's really brought that home for me. The old Lola Bajongora.